G'day, and welcome to another Space Engineers tutorial. This time we're up in space because we're going to take a look at jump drives. First thing to look at with these is how much we actually need in order to build one. If we go to our production menu and then go to our large blocks, you can scroll down, select one, and you'll see that you need all of these components. The gravity generator components and the superconductor conduits both mean that you need a fairly large supply of gold in order to put one of these together. The rest of the parts are relatively easy to come by. Maybe the cobalt's a bit rough too. So let's pop one down and have a closer look at it. That's the side of it. These are two blocks by three blocks by two blocks, so they're quite large you're going to need a fair bit of space in order to fit one into your ship. And I did rearrange the talisman so that we could fit one in it, so that we can use it for testing later. If we hop into our control panel for this, you can see immediately there's a status down here on the right. We've got our max required input, which is 32 megawatts. That's the maximum amount of power that the jump drive can accept in order to build up its charge. And for the jump drive to function, it has to have 100% of its charge. And that's this, the max stored power. It needs to have three megawatt hours of charge within the jump drive for it to function at all. It doesn't matter whether you're going to be jumping a short distance or a long distance, you must be at 100% before you can jump. Currently, we have 11.43 of that 32 being delivered to the jump drive and it's currently stored 170 kilowatt hours of that 3 megawatt hours with 19 or 18 minutes left to go until it will actually be able to work. If we scroll down here on the left we can see that we've got it set to recharge on we've got our distance. This won't change the actual distance reading in the brackets until the jump drive is fully charged. Jump drives can allow you to jump ahead in a straight line, and the direction of that line is dependent on the heading of your cockpit, specifically your main cockpit, which is the only cockpit that will be able to trigger the jump drive's action. You can define how far that blind jump is by adjusting your distance here. If you want to go to a particular place that you've already been before, you can use a GPS location, select it, hit select, and you'll jump to that distance, to that location. So let's select Moon in there for the time being. We've still got 18 minutes left to charge. Let's see if we can speed that up a bit. At the moment we've just got a battery powering this platform. All of these reactors are currently switched off and these two other batteries are switched off. So if we turn this battery on, and you'll note you don't need to have this set to discharge in order for the jump drive to take charge from it. When we jump across here now, you can see that there's more input going to this jump drive. And if we then power on one of the reactors, it should max out what this jump drive can accept. Yep, 32 megawatts of the 32. So now it's only got six minutes left before it's fully charged and we can start playing around with it. A single jump drive will allow you to travel a maximum of 2,000 kilometers. If you want to travel further, you'll have to add more jump drives. That maximum of 2,000 kilometers is only achieved when your ship weighs less than 1,000, sorry, than 1,250,000 kilograms. And as you can see, this ship, it currently weighs 1.9 million kilograms. So this one will not be able to travel 2,000 kilometers on that one jump drive. The talisman, on the other hand, it most certainly can. So let's jump over to one of these ones and let's do a blind jump first and see what that involves. You can see this is a bit redesigned. I've even put some lighting in and this version of the talisman is up on the workshop. So if we hop in, go to our jump drive, you can see that it is fully recharged. And then if we adjust our distance, it will actually show up what it is. Unfortunately, you can't type in distances here. You can only type in percentages. So 
sliding the wheel actually, sliding the bar actually makes it a bit easier. Now, what we're going to first do is we're just going to jump a short distance. So we'll jump about 50 kilometers as a blind jump. To be able to jump, you have to set up this jump drive on your hotbar. And we'll clear that and set it up. So we right click on the jump drive and we select jump. There is no other way to jump with these. You cannot do it from within the control panel. If you see, there's no jump command here. So we're ready to go. Let's hit our jump. If we press two, we get this dialog box coming up if everything is working. If our jump drive is charged, and if we're able to jump where we're trying to get to. This is a blind jump. We're going to jump 50.41 kilometers. We'll be able to jump all of that based on our current jump drives. And that's the weight of our transported mass. And because it's below that minimum of 1.25 million kilograms, we're good to go. So if we click yes, we'll see this fancy effect, a countdown from 10. And then in three, two, one, we'll jump. You can see now we're 50 kilometers away from where we were. We were at the Earth in brackets outside gravity marker. You can also see that if I hit two again, I'm ready to jump straight away. The reason for that is this jump drive was able to recharge incredibly quickly. Let's make it a bit harder and let's jump all the way to 2000. Oh, let's jump about 800 kilometers. That'll do. One, two, three, jump. Away we go. There are a few places that you're not able to jump to. And you're also not able to jump from them. The most obvious one and the most important one is you cannot jump into or out of a natural, a natural gravity well. So what I mean by that is you cannot jump into or jump out of the gravity field of a planet or moon. You're also not able to jump into another vehicle or ship. You're not able to jump into an asteroid. The game does not allow you to collide with anything as the result of a jump, which means you can't really weaponize the jump drive. Now, if we look, if we press our jump again, we'll see that it's saying that it's only partially charged. It's up to 67.68.11, etc., etc. Until that is fully charged, I will not be able to jump. So, instead of hanging around and waiting for that, let's jump back and let's grab another one I prepared earlier. This time, what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and jump into the planet, just to demonstrate that it is not possible. So we'll point straight at the planet. We'll set our jump drive distance to let's say 123 kilometers and jump. Jump drives cannot be used to jump into a natural gravity field. Okay. Well, the planet's 123, 120 kilometers in diameter, so what if we push this up to 500 kilometers? Should be well and truly clear of the planet on the other side. Will it let us jump? No. Right now we're too close to the planet, so it doesn't really like letting us jump. What if we just max that right out? Is it going to let us jump? No. Because there's a natural gravity field there, it seems like the game doesn't actually let us have our warp path head through that gravity field. That'll be pretty difficult to test on further objects like Mars, as my accuracy is nowhere near good enough to try and do that. But what we will do is try anyway. When you're using one of these jump drives for the first time, you're going to have escaped a planet, or if you've started in orbit, you'll be wanting to head towards somewhere you haven't been before, which means you'll still be using these blind jump style of jumps. So you'll line it up on the planet you want. You'll have your distance set to maximum, which it currently is, and then you'll jump. We jump straight towards Mars. And hopefully we end up nice and close. So then we can just glide the rest of the way there at 100 meters a second without us having to spend all week doing it. 
And you can see we've actually jumped slightly past Mars. This means on the standard solar system map, you should be able to make it to Mars on a single jump with a single jump drive. Which is kind of nice. The alien planet, however, it is a significant distance further away. So again, let's jump back to our other talismans. Hop in another one. And let's look at jumping to GPS coordinates. While blind jumps do define their direction based on the heading of the main cockpit, GPS jumps, so if we say let's jump to the moon, which is only 1.42%, so that's going to be a very short jump. These don't matter which direction you're heading. So where's our moon? Oh, what's going on there? It's too close to the other one. Where's our moon? Our moon's over there, off to our right. I can now press jump and this will still work. You can see that the jump effect does point in the direction of your destination even though our ship is very much not pointed in that direction. And there we go, we've arrived above the moon. Now, what about if you're trying to jump to a GPS coordinate and you can't get all the way there? Well, what will happen is you'll just jump as far as your jump drives allow you to. As you can see, we will jump our max jump is 2,000 kilometers. Our alien planet is up there, 5,766 kilometers away. What I'm also going to do here is I'm going to start flying off to the side. I'm going to turn my inertial dampeners off. I'm moving at 100 meters a second in a different direction to what I'm about to jump. Will my velocity translate after the jump? Let's find out. In five, four, three, two, one. Zoom. Okie dokie. So I'm still traveling. This is important to note. I'm also 2000 kilometers closer to the alien planet, but this is important to note. If you are moving and you jump to a GPS marker that's very close to a base that you've got in space, you're going to want to be really careful that you're not going to end up going splat straight into your base. But it is kind of cool that we keep our momentum while we jump. So if you're static, you'll remain static. If you're moving, you'll keep going in that direction, no matter what's in the way. There are a few safety features that make this less of a worry, but still something to keep in mind. There's also a minimum distance that you're able to jump. And if we look at our jump drive, it'll tell us right here. If we remove the coordinate, the minimum distance is five kilometers. You cannot jump less than that. If again, we jump back to get another talisman. We can demonstrate one final thing about the jump drives before we start testing with the mass of that station. Around here, I have an asteroid marker. Oh, that's close. Where's the asteroid marker? Asteroid. Oh, I think I just turned all the way around. Okay. On the other side of this ship, well, this will be an interesting thing to test. Can we go through this ship? So that asteroid marker is between me and that talisman on the other side, just in front of me. So let's set up our jump drive to jump to that asteroid marker. That asteroid marker is also set in the hollow center of that asteroid. Can I make this jump? Looks like it's gonna let me. So it's 6.79 kilometers. Now, what's gonna happen when we land? Are we going to end up ripping ourselves to shreds by being inside the asteroid? Or will space engineers do something sensible? And it'll do something very sensible. It actually drops us quite short of our marker and we didn't interact with that other talisman that was in front of us. 
If we take a quick look back at the warning dialog that came up, you'll actually see that it says distance to the proximity of the coordinate and then achievable percentage of the jump. And will also tell you how far it's going to jump short of the object. If we hop out, we can actually fly in and see why that marker didn't allow us to jump to it. It's quite clever, we get set back about a kilometer from the object, which means most ships that are designed with decent braking systems should be able to arrest themselves before they'd go splat, but still possible. I put this marker right in this hollow space. The talisman possibly could have fit in here, but instead of trying and ending up with all sorts of problems, the game just very sensibly puts us a kilometer and a half or so back from where we should, where we were trying to end up. We've seen that we can do blind jumps with our jump drives. We can do GPS jumps. We can't jump into gravity wells. We also cannot jump out of them. We also know that they need a lot of power to be able to charge fully and that they have to be fully charged before you can use them, even if you're trying to do a short distance jump. What? about if you're you've started to jump and then you realize that you don't actually want to jump to where you're going to well there is a way you can cancel a jump once you've started the countdown but the simp and the simplest way to you to do that is to add another command to your hotbar which is toggle block on or off so if we start our countdown we're going to do a blind jump of five kilometers and then we turn the jump drive off the jump gets aborted what also happens is we will use up the power that's required for that jump now i did two short ones let's do a long distance jump and then cancel that so this should dump all of our power so if i turn that back on and hop to my jump drive, you'll see that it's all it's fully depleted its power. So while you can cancel, it does cost you because you will already expend all of that energy. The talisman's light enough that we can jump it to the maximum range of a single jump drive. And if we add a second jump drive to, the, to it, which we'll just pop one on the outside, We'll let that get charged up while we have a look at the weight of our station here. This station weighs 1.9 million kilograms and if we look at our jump drive and we remove the moon coordinate we can see that its maximum jump distance is 1283 kilometers which is substantially shorter than the 2000 we were getting with the talisman. If we connect up to the talisman, that distance will get even shorter. So let's move these into auto locking range. There we go. We're locked up. Now we're up to 2.4 million. If we go to our jump drive, it's now down to 1000 kilometers. Jump drives will jump with anything that's currently attached to the main grid. So anything attached with landing gears, connectors, etc. Or any astronauts, engineers, that are actually in cockpits or in seats. You can't just be wandering around. If you are, you will be left behind when the ship jumps. One of the interesting things about that is that if we connect up to another ship first so we'll put these landing gear on move in and lock you'll see that our mass is heavier and this does get applied to the jump drive's maximum range however you can exploit this and you can jump with all that extra mass without it affecting your maximum range. All you have to do to do that is lock down your landing gear after you've started your jump countdown. 
the wiki article actually says that this doesn't work, but I've tested it and let's have a look at the results. What we've got is our talisman fully charged up and with the jump drive set to jump toward the alien planet. The alien planet is 5,766 kilometers away. Our jump drive can get a maximum of 2,000 kilometers with our current mass. And if we jump, if we connect up to the base, our mass is more than 10 times higher. And our jump drive now has a max jump distance of 475 kilometers. So, if we get away with cheating this extra mass by connecting after the jump calculates, we should get to 3,766 kilometers away from the alien planet. And if not, we'll still be over 5,000 kilometers away. So let's start our jump countdown. Yep, 2,000 kilometers, everything's good, yes. And then let's lock our landing gear. In five, four, three, two, one. And we did it. We carried all of that extra mass with very little effort. So there is an exploit in this and hopefully someone clever will fix that at some point because that does feel a bit cheaty. Setting up your jump drives and then just grabbing onto all the heavy stuff. One of the other things I wanted to demonstrate with the jump drives is that you cannot jump stations. Just behind our little ugly ship here, we've got a battery with a merge block and a couple of other blocks that are that are intersecting some voxels. That means that they are currently a station. So if we merge with them using these merge blocks, if I can ever get there, Let's put our So right now we can jump Oh There's an obstacle detected I get the impression that there needs to be a minimum distance so that it will actually detect an object that's going to cause a problem for the jump, which is why we're getting the problem now, but we weren't getting the problem earlier when we jumped a talisman through another talisman in order to get to our coordinates. This might be something I'll have to come back to later to test more specifically, but for the purposes of using the jump drive, just make sure you've got clearance in front of you and you should be good to go and jump where you need to be. And it's definitely not going to let us jump now. Right now I can click on that jump button all I like and because we are part of a station it will not let us jump. As soon as we disconnect that merge block it's going to give us this jump warning meaning that we could jump we've just got something in the way. The last thing I want to show is that if you can't make it far enough on one jump drive you just need to add more. The talisman now has two jump drives so if we look at a jump drive, we'll see our max distance is now up to 4,000 kilometers. It doesn't matter which jump drive you have set on your hotbar, it can access the power from any jump drives attached to the grid. So if we set one the main jump drive to jump to the alien planet, and that's the jump drive that's on our hotbar, if we press jump, you'll see that our jump destination is the alien planet. If we add the other jump drive, jump drive number two, to our hotbar, and we check jump drive two is a blind jump, 4,000 kilometers, and we press it, we'll be able to make a blind jump. If you've got multiple jump drives on your ship, you can use this so that you can have hotbar set up so that you can jump in two directions. So if you're frequently making trips between one place and another, you can set one jump drive up to jump you away and one jump set up for the return trip. Let's jump 
relatively close to the alien planet. One, two, three. Of course, this wouldn't be limited just to return round trips. You could have your, if you've got four or more jump drives, you could set them up so that they go to a whole bunch of different locations so that you can easily jump to wherever you need to be. And now we've managed to make it to only 1600 kilometers away from the alien planet. One thing you'll also notice is, down in the bottom right, my power is maxed out. That means it's going to take a long time for these to charge because they're not getting their full 32 megawatts. They're only getting 22 of that 32, which is pretty ordinary. The very last thing, just because I only mentioned it and didn't actually show it, we're now in the gravity well of a planet and we cannot make a jump. Hopefully these tests have been useful to you guys. If you've got more questions or more things you'd like me to test, let me know. And as always, there is plenty more to come. More survival, more tutorials. So I'll see you then.